Hello everyone, I'm Buck Weezer. Welcome back. We're putting the do in the do-it-yourself and we are working here on the 2003 Honda Odyssey and we're trying to diagnose and fix a parasitic battery draw which leaves us stranded if we don't drive the van at least once a week. Now, in our previous video, we took the first step to uh, uncover a 120 milliamp draw at all times on the battery, even at rest, which is the reason for our uh, dead battery if we go a week or two without driving it. And then we further diagnosed, we uh, identified the offending circuit, the 7.5 amp fuse, coming from right under there at the... Uh, passenger under dash uh, power distribution box so the question is now what how do we fix it how do we find which component is really at fault well that fuse in the manual is labeled backup slash ACC no I'm sorry it's labeled clock comma backup um, obviously the uh, turn the key on got my dash lights and all and the car will start and drive with that fuse removed but we don't have a clock uh, but I still have no idea what backup means and uh, so I went online to uh, eautorepair.net where you can it's a great site for a DIYer and you can uh, we'll fire it up actually so the car starts and drives and uh, anyway eautorepair.net for twenty dollars you can get a month access to the uh, online the manual the uh, Mitchell repair manual and there I was able to uh, determine what fuse 13 that 7.5 amp clock backup fuse does the thing about it is, is I'm not entirely sure it's completely accurate, but I've got this whole list of low consumption, it looks like it's feeding low consumption control modules. Obviously the clock, and with the fuse bolt I have no clock. Climate control module, it may be the light for the climate control module, I do have climate control. See that turns on. I don't know why I would say that I don't have climate control clearly we do what else here gauge assembly maybe that means the lights on the gauge assembly my gauges are working um, so if I turn on the headlights uh, maybe it's the gauge lights I can't see no they come on so I don't I don't know why some of these things are listed heater control panel I think we have heat. Like I said, we've got the, the climate control. Keyless receiver unit. Okay, so that truly is uh, affected by this circuit. I, I discovered that when I have that fuse pulled, my, my uh, key fob does not work at all. So that one, I, I believe. Door multiplex control unit. I'm not sure what that is. Immobilizer indicator light. That's a little red light that flashes right here. Anti-theft. It's part of the radio. And that does flash when the key's off. So also a radio lights up. Uh, thought I saw it just flash. So that, that seems to be part of working. I don't know why that is listed on this fuse. Driver's multiplex control unit. I don't know what that does. I do know that, <coughs> let's see, we do have locks, uh, all right, um, we do have power windows, uh, let's see what else here, power sliding door control unit, aha, okay, so I noticed that I do not have power sliding doors when that fuse is removed, now that fuse is too small to protect the motor, the, the power going to the motor, but the, the control units 
on each side because I got two power sliding doors. So that might be something for us to consider. Passengers multiplex control unit. So I don't know entirely what all those things are or do, but I'm trying to nail down where exactly is the fault. And I'm going to go with a hunch that I mentioned in my previous video. You see, right now, the computer believes that our tailgate is ajar, and I assure you that it is not. But no matter what I do, it seems to think the tailgate's open. And I have a feeling that might be something for us to look into as part of this parasitic battery draw. Let me go back there and I'll show you something. Ever since I bought this car like a year and a half ago, this tailgate has not operated correctly. Even with the doors unlocked, it won't open. But as I told you, the computer thinks it is open. I can put the key in and turn it. And if I keep the key in the unlocked position and hold it there, I can lift the hatch. But I can't open it otherwise, even though it's technically unlocked. I have to hold the key here, then open it. It's not a big deal, but I simply think our problem might be with that tailgate lock unit because it doesn't work correctly and because I know the computer thinks it's always open, which it's not. That might be where we need to give our attention next. All right, everybody, I think we're on to something. I took the cover off of this inside of the tailgate to access the mechanism. Discovered that the reason that I had to hold the key in the, in the uh, on position to unlock it is because this is, the, this is the manual that has broken off and it was stuck under the plastic so it couldn't come all the way up. Um, so that's actually good to know but what I've gone ahead and done is I unplugged the one two three wiring harness can three wiring connectors that feed this mechanism and guess what our draw has dropped down to 10 or 20 milliamps instead of 110 or 120 so I think we're on to something when I was suspecting that this uh, tailgate locking mechanism module here was a good part of the problem because uh, it never was working right and because the dash was always telling me that it is uh, open even when it's not. I'm going to try to plug these back in one at a time and see if I can identify which is the probable the problem. So I don't know if it's this mechanism that I need to uh, take care of, replace. I, I honestly don't really care about it that much. I need to be able to open it, of course. But I really don't care if the computer knows whether it's open or not. I'm, you know, no real danger that I'm going to drive off with it open because I'm not. But our 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 amperage draw has dropped down to a level where it should be, and I think we are correct in identifying the problem is that tailgate latch. Okay, so happily we're getting 10 or 20 millivolts. That's all the draw we have right now. I'll show you what I did with this uh, power, power, this tailgate uh, locking mechanism. I plugged back in two of the three connectors. The only one I left unconnected was this one here, which I believe to be the, the sensor that indicates whether the door is ajar or closed. And I'm going to leave it that way because it really doesn't matter to me. The key is now working correctly. The tailgate still, the, the locking mechanism is working. I need to extend this because the tip had bro broken off so that it's coming up through this hole in the uh, 
in the uh, molding and I've got my tail so with that small thing I've got my tailgate lock fixed and I've also solved the parasitic battery drain 10 or 20 milliamps is absolutely in range what it should be and uh, I think we've got it fixed Well, the hard part's going to be sticking that <laughs> panel back up. Man, that they they can be a pain. But I'll take care of that on my own. I really want to thank you for watching. I'm glad we were able to do this. It just it just made sense to me that yeah, I I just had this realization at one point that the two problems are probably related. The tailgate lock mechanism not working and it always thinking that it's open coupled with this parasitic battery draw and when I put two and two together we came to a, uh, the proper conclusion and solution I hope that helps you uh, I really appreciate you watching your comments and questions in the discussion are always appreciated and uh, uh, I'm really happy about getting this solved it was a head scratcher for a while now I won't have my wife or my son texting me every once in a while saying thunder is dead no I think we've got it solved awesome have a great day guys and I look forward to seeing you all on our next video bye bye Hey, look what I did. I've, I fixed the uh, inside locking mechanism for the tailgate uh, with a wooden dowel. Locked, unlocked, locked, unlocked. Not bad, huh?